Hello? We have a call out. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Who is calling from where? This is Sunday from the UK. Is it the same Sunday who just called? It is not the same Sunday. This is a different Sunday that you know. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is Victoria's husband. Victoria's husband. Eh? This, you were the one I was thinking was calling before. This is like, yeah. I, 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 thought, I thought as much. I okay, thought, okay, yeah. Thought, yeah. I, yeah, my brother. That was what, it, yeah, that was what I instigated me. I said, look, I must call. Okay, and today is Sunday's of, day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, mainly to kind of portray the fact that Pastor Sunday has been around for many He knows me from like 20 years ago? <laughs> yes, oh. about. Yes, 2000. Yes, 19, 2000. Yes, 2000. Yes, yeah, almost 20 uh, years ago. years ago. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You so, go, tell, them, to, tell, them where you, tell them where you came to see me. <laughs> I, I will tell them. I will tell them. You there is a brother that. Okay. there that actually knows me. There is a brother at the HMC right now that knows me. But I'm you just, he knows you? So thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, of yeah. course. He probably might not know me right now, but he knows me. No, he knows. He knows you now. He's telling. He's mentioning your your bad name to me now. Eh, uh, my second name. Yes. That's good. Yes, yeah. so I, I know. I, I know him very well. So anyway, in two thousand, to people's amazement, I met Pastor Sunday in Kenaland, and it was a it was a miraculous meeting. In that, that time, I was in the university in Nigeria, and I was um, I was introduced into leaving Nigeria to study in Canada by my sponsor, who who all of a sudden died when we were about seventy percent into the journey of leaving Nigeria for Canada. And at the same time that year, I was a Sunday school teacher in a Baptist church in Lagos. So I saw one of my friends, one of my students actually, reading uh, like a little magazine. And I took it from her. Then I saw the story of Pastor Sunday. <laughs> and at the end of the story, I saw the email address. And I emailed him to pray for me. But to my greatest surprise, Pastor Sunday replied and said, I will pray for you, but at the same time, I will support you. Before I knew it, Pastor Sunday paid part of my tuition fee to the University of Canada. Ah. Mm. And I've never met him. Mm. I've, I've, in fact, let me even tell you more about it. The same email I sent to Pastor Sunday I sent it to Kenneth Copeland Ministry. And it was up until today, only Pastor Sunday that replied. Mm -hmm. They did not even reply and say, oh, we will be praying for you. But in any case, that was how I got to know Pastor Sunday. But to my greatest surprise, just about three weeks later, Pastor Sunday said, I'll be coming to Nigeria if you want to see me. Yeah. Then I went to see him. Right there in attack. And you know what? My life changed. Ah, I just wanna I just wanna thank God for what is happening right now. It was like this is expected. We should have seen people that will stand for the truth for a very long time. But the devil has taken dominion over the church. The devil resides right now inside the <laughs> there, is a, there is a big problem. Hello? Hello? Network, eh? Yeah, there's information. Okay. See? Someone has known me since two, in the two, year 2000.
and see where he came to see me. That's when I've been friendly with Oyedepo. Even before then, I've been friendly with Oyedepo. Oyedepo has been hosting me in his house since, since those years. So for somebody to now say, you know, I, I, am, uh, I hate the church, or um, I'm against, the, you know, uh, the fathers. They, before they know them as fathers, I've known them as friends. So I said I've been around. Yes, Pastor, I mean, uh, Doctor Success. Give him the microphone. Thanks, Pastor. But I didn't know that these things were strange. Somebody told me a young man in, de in despair to reply, even if it is not any young man in despair. Anybody, you have to reply. That just you don't you don't even have to be a Christian. That is just being a human being. That is just being a human being. If somebody wrote you, you just have to, that's decency. You just you even have to be a Christian thing. You just, you just have to be normal to reply to people's letter. Well, that's number one. Number two, someone is writing me and he's telling me that he's a young man, 19 years or something or 17 years, that he, he got good, good result, but the person wanted to sponsor him, you know, you know, died all of a sudden. If I'm human and I have the spirit of God and I have emotion and passion, won't I be able to say, ah, okay, maybe, you know, I will pray for you. But even if I could help a little bit, why not? It's just human. It's just normal thing if I can. If I cannot, like now, I'm under this, my, you know, limitation. <laughs> and I think God put me there so that, you know, it will be like that. I might not be able to, but at least, you know, I can tell you the truth. But at least I can write you or reply you. That's what, uh, you know, even prison allows it to happen. <laughs> but when somebody is in despair, and I know I was in despair, I don't need to know him. The, but later on, after that incident, though, I now began to discover that people were cheating, people were shit. So a lot of times I've tried to do similar things, and it has said, okay, for example, one person, who was even there himself? Sufficient knows about it. George, blah, blah, blah. I would use them to send money to this guy. He said he got admission to. He even sent me the letter. He wanted to go to Texas to some to attend some program over there. So to, to school, pay the school fees. I pay, I sent him the money for his school fees. Mm -hmm. Then he disappeared. So two years later, I said, ah, "Where are you? Have you? How was your data?" Texas. I said, "No." When that time you sent the money, <laughs> the, the landlord, the landlord was, yes, yeah, he started telling me about landlord. How come landlord? We didn't start about landlord at all. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't start about landlord at all now. The landlord uh, was chasing me and my wife away from the house. So it was enough for us to build a bungalow. So we decided to use it to build because there was a piece of... What was my own problem that there was a piece of land? <laughs> Is that my problem that was... So now that I cut off with from him, he's now coming around and saying, okay, but well, why? You know, you, but you were good to me, but why? He's, I'm now the bad one. Because I said, no, you can, if you can deceive me. You can deceive me, but you can only deceive me one time. <laughs> You can only deceive me one time. You will not have the second chance. He said, but I beg now. I've asked for forgiveness. I asked my wife to write. I have my mother-in-law to write. I asked this one to ask for forgiveness. Everybody is asking for forgiveness. But you are wicked. Your heart is done. You are not acting for, you are not uh, forgiving. What you preach, you don't practice. I said, okay. <laughs> you know, anything you want to make you say. But you will not get me the second time. There is another one, for example, that wanted to work for me. Okay. okay, we have a caller. <laughs> Hello? It's me. Yes, it's me. Maybe it's we lost again. you. Yes. Please continue. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a network issue. Okay. But in any case, I'm just going to quickly continue. So, like I said, I said the devil now resides in churches in Nigeria. <laughs> and we have, we have to be really careful, very, very careful. Now, one thing I want to thank God for is this HMC. Mm -hmm. Myself and my wife, 
we've been actively watching. Wow. And it's like it's like the word of God came to us afresh. We are, seeing, we, we are seeing God for the same God He is, not for the God that people sell to us. Hmm. I wh why this became of interest to me, DSA, when you started talking about light. I did a research around what we call light fidelity. It's a new technology okay. that will kind of, um, maybe it will come after Wi-Fi, but some companies are using it now. And that, that research is actually trying to exploit the strength of light for data communication. Okay. And when you started explaining that energy and getting to the peak of it i mean then when you start talking about slowing down to bring it to the physical yes which would then mean manifestation of the what we have received yes in the spirit and that is what actually qualifies us as christian hmm. but to, to be honest with you dsa and others watching there we have so many wastes in terms of light. A lot of people try to peek and get into the peak and get the energy, get everything. But because we are so religious and we are being carried away by all kinds of doctrines, we kind of lose that touch when it gets to the physical realm. That's so For true. Example, Emission. Hmm. Yes. Emission. Yes. So we're losing, we're losing data. We're, we're, it's lost, data lost. So mm. you get it in the spirit realm, but you don't have the potential to bring it in the, into the physical. Mm. So it, it, becomes, it becomes like we are wasting God's resources. Mm. God, and at the end of the day, I'm afraid that God will not judge us by that. Because if God says, I gave you this, I gave you that, what did you use with it in the, in the physical realm when you got back to this app? So it, it, there is a big issue around, around what we are losing. And we as Christians, we need to be really careful. I don't understand what chairs in the church have to do with <laughs> miracles. Hmm. I cannot see the connection hmm. between myself worshipping my Creator and something that I created, I am now worshiping. So three lines of thought. Hmm. Somebody created me. Hmm. I created a chair. Now, the person that I should be worshiping should be my creator. Hmm. And whatever I've created should actually worship me. So, when it comes to myself now buying down to what I created. Ah, 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 there is a problem. It's insane. Insanity. That means I'm being devalued. That hmm. means the God in me is inactive. Hmm. It means that I could as well be as useless as what I created. Hmm. And this is where so many millions are dying every day. Hmm. There is a big danger. I have learned so much from you, Pastor Sunday, hmm. and I keep learning. But this particular HMT is a mind opener. My, my soul, my spirit, everything around me is opened. And not just me, even my wife. And we started talking about it. Besides, when you spoke about the issue of conception, and I, I'm sure you would remember this, and yes, I don't sir. mind to kind of say that. Yes. We had issues, you know, bearing children when we initially got married. But, you know, when you then explain what happened recently, maybe on Tuesday, and I felt like, oh my God, this is revelation becoming flesh. Hmm. So, we... We have seen the light, 
and I will not go back. So, in any case, Pastor Sunday supported me, and I'm going to go back to the story. I left Nigeria. When I left Nigeria, I kept in touch. I was a pastor in another church. Then, I, the, the, the pastor there wanted me to, the general of the GEO, the Baba, wanted me to link into with Pastor Sunday. So that kind of initiated um, like a journey to Ukraine in year 2007. And that was the last time I saw you physically. Yes. Pastor Sunday, I'm sure you will remember this. Yes, sir. I came to Ukraine. Yes, sir. Yeah. And the, the, my, my coming to Ukraine was like a liberation for me. So these things you are talking about now, some of us, we've known you to be preaching the same message since that time. So when I go there, a lot of things happen. But I won't mention all, all of them here because some of them are sensitive. And you know yourself, yes. Yes. So basically, that was the beginning of my deliverance. I was sold into selling anointing oil. I would travel from Spain to Italy to preach, start churches, collect money from people, and sell them anointing oil and catch it. And when I come back to the base in London, the GEO will ask me, what is the level of Agoti Kuyo? Now, <laughs> what is the level of what is the level of Agoti Kuyo? They are asking what does I don't it want mean, to no? translate it. That's all. That's why I, that's what I want to say it that way so that you will know that sometimes okay. when you see around these geos, we tend to see some things are happening that you don't know. Okay. So the man will say, "What is the level of agnostic kuyo?" The first time he said it to me, I did not understand it, and I felt like, "What is he talking about?" And he said, "In your dad needs baptism, which means that they have to teach me their language." Okay. So then, yes. So then, somebody now called me. Another senior person now said, "I got the kuyo means money. How much do we make a lola pa? Okay. So the level of I got the kuyo must always be high at every service. It must be. In fact, they have a formula. They calculate how many people attend the service." And they can gauge how much you kind of make in terms of offering, depending on, on how prophetic you make the, the message to be. So they want the message to be prophetic for people to shout, say, Amen, Hallelujah, I receive. Oh, you know, that kind of a thing. Then along the line, you just throw the bomb. If you receive indeed, you have to sow that seed, this seed. You know, then people would, out of the fact that they don't think, ignorance, start coming out and give money. And that was what I was into. But I thank God. Yeah, the reason is that I, Sunday Sunday was a very trusted minister. He was very passionate and faithful. He was thinking these people are men of God because the whole country knows them as men of God. So he was just trying to serve. So the man trusted him and was teaching him all the tricks of how to maneuver people, manipulate bank. But the whole thing he is interested in is not ministry. Because he's based in Nigeria and he was yes. managing the church in Europe here, yeah, in different countries in Europe. Yeah. So the thing that, exactly. what, what always surprised Sunday when his, when his eyes began to open is that he's not asking how many people got saved or what happened, what God, the God did. He's always asking for those questions. How many questions. people got saved? No, we don't think about people that got saved. Salvation is far from the Salvation, no way. You don't do altar call. My CEO that time would always do altar call of offering, seed of faith, give, all that kind of thing. That's the only altar call he knows how to do. In fact, for throughout my my time with him, he had never for one call for somebody that wants to give his life to Jesus. Before. Wow. Never. And on a single day, that we have a service, it will call offering four times. Ooh. 
I am not telling you what somebody told me. I am telling you what I know, what I saw. I thank God it did not become flesh in me. Otherwise, I would have been destroyed. I saw it, and I was like, oh my God. But the bottom line is that I came to Ukraine, and that was the beginning of my liberation. Amen. I thank God that Pastor Sunday was able to kind of guide me through, and I was able to leave that church. That number one. Because I won't get to serve. Because I love God. Because I want true evangelism. Because I want the gospel to travel around the world according to the scripture. I joined another church that you know. And guess what? It's the same thing. Money. In fact, that one, they would invest into you with the mind that at a certain period of time, they will start getting their own money back. And you'll be paying them until the kingdom of God comes. Woo! It's nothing but RCCG. RCCG, yeah. RCCG, yeah. I want to thank God for this moment. Because it's a moment that a lot of people prayed for. This message, some people did not have the opportunity to sing this song really, really loud. But I thank God that God is using Pastor Sunday to kind of minister to souls, especially young people like us, who would have been very useful in the industry, different mm. industries. Mm. But rather because of being brainwashed, we will be wasting away in church. Mm. I go to church, I go to a white church mm. here in Ipswich. And I just want to thank God that even my pastor sometimes watches Pastor Sunday. Wow. I see him online. I, say, this is, it's, I think we have a few black people there. We are about 300 in that church and about 80%, 90% are white. So, but he comes down to that level and say, there's something I want to learn about Pastor Sunday. And he will watch. So what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to Nigerian churches, let's forget it. <laughs> they've been sold to the dead. Let's call a faith a faith. Don't tell lies. Now, the brother that called earlier that said his name was Sunday as well, he mentioned the fact that anytime he's driving to church, he gets to Eildarton Road in London, then he starts seeing black people going to church on a Sunday morning. Now, when you drive past that old Kent Road, just somewhere on the road, there is another road that is called Ildatin Road. If you enter Ildatin Road, you will see all kinds of Nigerian churches, white garments. You will see Celestia, Kerubim and Seraphim, World Evangelism, whatever, Faith Bible, all kinds of names. You will see on one street, just like within a space of about 200 meters, and it got to a stage, because I used to be committed in that church at that time. So I went out in the morning, like 3 a.m., you know, just to kind of prayer walk. You know, this, this was about maybe 12 years ago. And um, I saw white government church members and pastors doing the incantation on the streets of London, Hildarton Road, and they were smashing coconut on the street and carrying. You know that kind of thing? That ritual that they do in Nigeria, they brought it right there to this Western country. Wow. In the United Kingdom. Wow. And, in fact, if you get to Peckham, somebody said to me that there's Babala over there. Yes. In Peckham. <laughs> the, the truth is this. Why wouldn't there be Babala in Peckham? You know, that road and Peckham is just about two miles away not far from each other, in fact, 1.5 miles. Now, why would there be Babalao in Peckham when there are Babalao in suits on the <laughs> that <thing? laughs> This is not about degrading anybody. It's about the gospel. It's about the truth. Somebody has to speak, and I thank God, DSA, that you are speaking. And somebody has to follow DSA step and be speaking as well. And I thank God for the likes of Maya Wa, um, Raphael and all of other people speaking. And I want to trust God that more will still speak. Amen. But Amen. It, look, it, it looks like 
we in this Western world, we have we are we are touching the, the fire. We we can see the light. Day in, day out, a lot are being delivered, but Nigeria becomes a bottleneck. Yeah. If, if you go to Nigeria now, you still see that a lot of them are lost. For example, when I went there last week and I was talking to a brother, and I said to the brother, what is it that you are doing? You are selling the gospel. And the brother said, well, you don't talk against men of God. But mm. I said, I'm a man of God myself. Mm. The fact that somebody has 10,000 sister church does not mean that he's more anointed than a baby that is born today. Yes. You know? A baby that is born today is even more likely to enter the kingdom of God. <laughs> because he doesn't know anything. He knows nothing. But this geo, all things could have happened. I have a lot to say, but time is always my issue. I have to travel to Tampara. Samfara in Nigeria. Who said he was a papa? Jesus. Okay, it's back now. Yeah. You have to travel to where? Hello. I have to travel to Samfara. After after Kaduna. Yes. In Nigeria to rescue my own brother. Who? My own brother. My own brother. Who? After that time was a successful. Veterinary doctor. But it got into the hand of an abalist. But that abalist has decided to serve as a prophet. Wow. And he brainwashed, hypnotized my brother. Hey. A old veterinary doctor, a lecturer in a college. Wow. And he became, became a beggar. On the street of Sahara. My God. It was a big battle. Yes. This is about three years ago. So I had to go there and I discovered the truth that that guy would always make juju for pastors. Ooh. He said this to my face. He said, Who are you to confront me? Your father, I made you do for them. <laughs> the church has been sold out to the devil. <laughs> and if you look at it, let me be really frank. When was the last time we had real evangelism in Nigeria? <laughs> real evangelism that somebody that happened to be a very conk Muslim became a Christian. When was the last time? Really long time. Yeah. The only thing we are doing now is we are rotating members. Yeah. MSN members, if their deliverance is not finished, they will go to redeem. <laughs> <laughs> they will leave. As a matter of fact, this is strategic. You, you know, they used to do power of change hand in MSN. Yes. And they, because MSN knew that Fridays when Redeem would have Holy Ghost night. People would finish around 5 o'clock. So MSM then changed the timing for Palm of Change and to 7 to 11 in the morning. Meaning that come from RCCG and come to MSM. <laughs> really strategic. Because if he is to do night video at the same time, then there will be less people yeah. in one of them. It is business. <laughs> They have to, it, it, it's nothing but business. business. They, are, they are building their own empire. These so, people so, we are talking about. So, Sunday, you will need to call back in the evening. People. You will need to call back in the okay, evening. Now. I'm sorry. Thank you so yeah, very no much. Problem. It's always inspiring to hear You're you. You're welcome. Yeah. You want to say something? You don't forget. Okay. <laughs>